everyone, and welcome to week 48. This week, we're going to continue looking at the Maelstrom synthesizer, and we're going to learn about some of the new filters, the shaper, the new modulators, the signal routing, and also some performance modifiers that you can use when you're creating or modifying a sound. Following the signal path from last week's video, we can see that both oscillator 1 and 2 have a couple of options when it comes to where you can route the audio output. Let's start with oscillator 1. These buttons here allow you to route the audio to either filter A via the shaper, to filter B, or just directly to the audio outputs with no filtering or effect applied. If you select this button and route through the shaper, you will only hear the effect if it is activated, and the same goes for filter A. Oscillator 2 has the option of either being routed to filter B or directly to the outputs when this button is off. If you do route audio to filter B, again you will only hear that filter if it is activated. You can also route the audio that is passed through filter B into the shaper, which would then send it to filter A as well. All of these routing options give you a good amount of flexibility when you're creating your sound, and combined with the spread knob, which controls the stereo pan width of the outputs from oscillator A or B and filter A or B respectively, you can produce very rich and complex textures. Since we're talking about the filters and the shaper, let's have a look at what is different and new. We learned about cutoff frequency and resonance and low-pass bandpass filters in week 45 of the subtractor videos, so we don't really need to go into detail on them. But to refresh your memory, they sound like this. What is new are the Comb Plus, Comb Minus, and AM filters. Comb filters are basically delays with very short delay times and adjustable feedback, which is controlled with the resonance knob. A comb filter causes resonating peaks at certain frequencies. The difference between plus and minus is in the position of the peaks in the spectrum. The main audible difference is that the minus version causes a bass cut. The resonance parameter in both cases controls both the shape and size of the peaks. AM is short for amplitude modulation, and is often referred to as ring modulation. As we learned with the subtractor, ring modulators work by multiplying two signals together. With the AM filter type selected, the filter produces a sine wave which is multiplied with the signal from oscillator A or oscillator B. Resonance controls the mix between the clean and modulated signals. The ring modulated output will then contain added frequencies which are generated by the sum of and the difference between the two signals. Now this filter is pretty useful for creating complex non-harmonic sounds. Just like in the subtractor, you have the ability to use keyboard tracking with just an on or off button, and filter envelope by activating this switch and turning the amount knob up to modify the sound. Thank you. 
The shaper is an optional wave shaper that can be used. Wave shaping is a synthesis method for transforming sounds by altering the waveform shape, thereby creating a rich, complex sound. You can create textures that are either very subtle or full-on lo-fi glitched-out madness. The amount knob decides how much of the wave shaping is applied. The different modes of wave shaping you can select are sine, which can produce a round or smooth sound, Saturate, which gives a lush, rich character to the sound. Clip, which introduces clipping or digital distortion to the signal. Quant, short for quantize, which lets you truncate the signal by bit reduction, thus making it possible to achieve that noisy, characteristic 8-bit sound. And noise, which is actually not strictly a shaper function, but instead multiplies the sound with noise. Now let's take a look at the modulators, or LFOs, of the Maelstrom. Just like we learned with the LFOs on the subtractor, the modulators of the Maelstrom can be used to change parameters or characteristics of a sound. First off, you need to activate a mod to enable it here, and also turn one of these destination knobs, but more on that in a second. There are some controls that are common to both modulators, like the waveform curve types, rate, or speed, tempo sync enable or disable, and also something new called one shot. When one shot is activated and you play a note, the modulator will play the selected waveform only once at the set rate and then stop, where normally the waveform loops continually. In other words, it will effectively be turned into an envelope generator. This A-B switch is used for deciding which oscillator and or filter the modulator should modulate, A, B, or both in the center. Note that the destinations on mod A and mod B are different from each other, and the knobs are bipolar, meaning that you can either have negative or positive effects on a parameter. If the knob is set in the center, you will get no effect. If you turn it to the left, it will be negative, and if you turn it to the right, it will be a positive effect. We already learned about destinations like pitch, filter, and volume. But what is new is that we can also modulate things like the oscillator index in motion to create some interesting movement, and also the shift knob for some formant fun. We could also use mod B to control the total amount of modulation sent from mod A by using this parameter. And lastly, we have the performance modifiers on the left. And just like with the modifiers on the subtractor, they allow you to control some aspects of the sound and morph it into other textures by using things like velocity and the pitch and mod wheels. This section works pretty much the same as we learned about on the subtractor, with a few different destinations since the Maelstrom is a different form of synthesis. 
Next week, we're going to continue our journey into some more advanced lessons as we begin to look at the Thor Polysonic Synthesizer. Now, hopefully after those lessons, you won't be scratching your head so much when you're trying to either create or modify a sound using Thor. Well, that's it for yet another week. Again, I'm James Bernard for Propellerhead Software, and I will see you all next week. Bye.